Well, congratulations. You made it to the finish line. DC salutes you. You know, there may be some people who are looking ahead. Maybe they've came to the first video and they're wondering what they get at the end of the road. So for those people, I'm going to do a little sneak preview of everything that we've covered and uh, just go over the shop itself. I think in the end, it turned out pretty cool. So let's check that out. All right, folks, so here it is. And as you can see, we have a glorious uh, slider right at the top of the page here, which is fully customizable. We can change the pictures. We can have them linking anywhere. Uh, it's very cool, and I'm happy with that. Moving along, we have a complete content management system. It gives us control over areas like this, but also it gives us the ability to create pages like um, this, for example. Um, so that's all fully functional and very cool. Um, the items themselves, I think, turned out very good. We've got two types of item pages. One is this uh, kind of, let's just call it a normal item page where we've got one picture, some text and whatnot. We added in a nice uh, JavaScript light box effect here and I think that turned out pretty well. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, we also added in multi-picture functionality like this and we achieved this by using AngularJS. Who would have thought when we started this that we'd end up using AngularJS. And of course, this is all lightboxable as well. You can click on and check that out. So uh, you wrote this, you did not download this or anything from another site. It was not something that you just found. You now know how to write AngularJS applications and stuff. It is quite fantasticola. Uh, so you've got that. Uh, we've also got a fully dynamic uh, navigation bar here. We can navigate into different categories like so. I think that's looking fantastic. Uh, this is using Bootstrap, of course, and that turned out pretty good. We obviously have our shopping cart fully functional. Um, it takes the user to PayPal, allows the users to create accounts, log in, uh, they can track orders, send internal messages, all sorts of stuff. We went over the Contact Us page. We spent quite a lot of time on this. Um, as you can see, we have a nice map here that can be easily and effortlessly changed uh, along with the address and all of those details. Uh, so if you have lots of sites, it's just a two-minute job to go in and change that stuff. This contact form, a lot of work went into this and I'm very happy with that because instead of sending an email, which is not really too reliable actually, we built an entire internal messaging system and here it is. So this is the admin panel of course that the shop owner has. So they can click in, read the message, we built a facility that lets them rank inquiries. So if this is our red hot inquiry, they can say give it four stars, for example. Uh, obviously, if they do that, then we can see the stars here. Uh, they can, of course, leave comments. Uh, this is a great customer. Okay, and they can do that. So these are internal comments so that the site owner can manage inquiries that are coming in. Same goes with orders and all of that stuff. They can look in uh, and view all of the different orders. Uh, they can check the orders out. You can see here we have a feed coming in from PayPal. Uh, to achieve this, you learned how to use a technology called Curl. We also, of course, covered encryption, hashing, uh, we also spent a lot of time going over how to make database queries safe. Um, so that's very cool. That's coming directly in from PayPal. You can, of course, uh, view the customer's contents of the shopping cart. You can change the order status. Let's say goods dispatched. We can do that very easily. Uh, and you can even 
uh, download or view PDF invoices. Now in this instance I'm just viewing via the browser but you know how to have it so that you can download PDFs uh, and we went over that as well, that was very good. Um, what else? Uh, homepage offers CSS, oh let's not forget the blog. We had a glorious, fantastic, nice blog here. I think it turned out pretty well with picture uploads and all the rest of it. So that turned out pretty good. Um, the customer backend system, I think, was particularly good. It lets the customers log in and track their orders and stuff like that. Uh, what else did we have? Let me just think. Uh, let's manage sliders up here. Oh, well, who could forget the final glorious touch that we added, which was the jQuery mobile version of the site. And at the start of this uh, thing, some of you folks were wondering, well, why jQuery mobile? And I think if you've made it to the end, you'll be in no doubt that jQuery Mobile is an awesome technology. Let me just demonstrate that actually. So this is the customer system here. The customer can obviously log in and check their inbox and stuff. This is for, you know, the customers. They can go in and send messages to the site owner, check their orders, all of that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, the site itself, this is how it's gonna look on a mobile phone. It's absolutely fantastic. You can see everything's here, the blog, everything works fantastically. Look at the way it navigates from page to page. It's just swapping out the content, very nice, very, very nice indeed. That turned out very well. We even figured out how to get um, AngularJS working with jQuery Mobile. So if we have a look at this page, for example, Look at this, it's a fantastic, this is one of the nicest pages I've ever built actually. We can click and change the picture, this is all AngularJS. Um, the URLs, look at the URLs, look at how search engine friendly those URLs are. I mean, Google is gonna just love this website and you know, I have to tell you folks, Google is just gonna love this. So it looks really nice. Um, Across all sorts of devices, it actually looks pretty good. iPhone 5, Galaxy S5, and so on. Not too bad, iPhone 6 Plus, yep, not too bad. Um, and I think that was pretty much it, okay? That was pretty much it. And I like to think that there, there were a bunch of other little tips and tricks and whatnot that hopefully you folks found useful. Now, of course, the thing is not 100%. For example, look at the dashboard homepage, right? Okay, and of course, we would need to delete things like we're not using these charts, for example, and stuff like that. But you don't want to watch a video of a guy deleting stuff. You know how to do that, okay? Uh, and there's lots of little bits, I think, that, um, you know, unfortunately, we. Unfortunately, we never quite had time to do, but all of the functionality is here. Here's the accounts, for example. Um, some users can have guest accounts, some users can create accounts on their own. Uh, here's the blog, it's really cool. Uh, manage categories, oh, that was something else we um, discovered, and that was how to drag and drop like this, okay? Again, nobody is covering this. I cannot find this anywhere on the web. We covered it. Uh, we can look at the subcategories. It's just fantastic. Look at the guitar subcategories. See how we can change the priority like that, and if we refresh this page, it will all be remembered. It's really, really cool, even if I do say so myself. We can obviously create as many order status options as you want. I mean, if you'll forgive me, I have to say this is quite a lot of stuff. So that's pretty much the shop for you, okay? I'd like to just end by saying a few words about the Codeigniter framework itself. Now, I like Codeigniter, as you may have gathered, I think it's kind of nice, but for me, this is the end of the road. 
Now, I know that there's a new version of Code Igniter right around the corner, uh, Code Igniter 4. Maybe it has already came out by the time you're watching this. Um, but I'm not going to be switching to that. I can tell you that the clients I have don't, they have a policy, and that is they don't use any technology if it is less than two years old, okay? So I'm talking to you near the end of 2016. If you are watching this um, before the end of 2018, then we're all still sticking with Code Igniter 3. Um, what you'll find is, at least my experience is, that when you deal with I don't want to sound smug, but when you deal with bigger companies, they actually hate framework rewrites. It's not a cool thing, you know? Um, and by the way, I don't want to be too controversial, but this is one of the reasons why big business will always be reluctant to go near the Laravel framework, for example, because it's constantly being re-released and rewritten. Lots of developers think that's a good thing, actually the business community don't like that kind of thing so the point is um if you're watching this i would even say before 2020 believe it or not then i think that this stuff still has some weight i'm just going to probably stick with this for the moment there's i'm not planning on doing anything else i'm not going to do code igniter 4 or anything i have done more code igniter videos than anyone and I think that's that. I do enjoy these tutorials, but I've got to talk about something else, you know? So good luck uh, to anyone who is going to continue with Code Igniter. I hope it all works out. I hope the new owners turn out to be good, and I hope they do a good job, you know? Um, but that's pretty much it from me. Uh, I, just thanks. Thanks, and please keep in touch keep in touch. I'm very easy to find. I hope you'll come to the Insider Club and say hello, maybe in the discussion forum or something, even just to say, hey man, I finished the tutorial and that would be awesome. Wouldn't it be cool if we could like all keep in touch and just help each other, you know? Maybe if something happens, maybe like me and you end up sick or something like I was a few years ago, wouldn't it be nice if you knew that you could just call upon some friends and we'll help you out, you know? That's what I'm really hoping for when it comes to the Insider Club. So please calm down and say hello. Let us know how you got on with this. Finally, actually, this really, really is the last thing. I think if I'm honest, um, this series kind of went on for too long. I had predicted it would be 50 videos. In the end, it was well over 130 and it's just not good, you know? And I'm reminded of the story of Bruce Lee when he fought the guy and won, but in the end was really depressed because it took too long. And I think that this series did expose a few weaknesses with the Code Igniter framework, if I'm honest. I think that the internal messaging system took far too long to build, and as I was going through that, I was thinking, man, I would do this differently. Like, you know, you could just, why not just do this, you know? So I'm thinking about that and I'm I'm not ruling out the possibility of building something that would be very similar to Code Igniter in terms of syntax, but would allow you to do things much, much quicker. Anyway, uh, that's for another day. Thank you very much indeed. Stay cool and I'll see you soon. Bye.